Good morning, everybody. Kyle from Scram Speed. I just uh, had the blue car in the uh, shop this morning. We just got back from Sick the Mags. A quick eight shootout in Norwalk last weekend and uh, did good. We won. We went the uh, fastest we've ever been with a 479. And I just brought the car in, doing a, a quick check over on everything and met a lot of cool people at that event. And uh, while checking the car over, I thought I should probably answer some of the questions I get asked on the car a lot, a lot. Um, and it's relevant to, you know, the shop cars that we have in here all the time as well. And that's uh, the big one last week was cooling system stuff. It was really, really hot. Uh, the, over the last couple of weeks here in central Illinois, it was, you know, in the 90s with like 115 index and stuff. And um, people are always concerned about the cooling systems on their car. How do you keep drag and drive cars or high horsepower performance cars cool? Um, and it is challenging, you know, to you know pick the right radiator, do all that kind of stuff and make sure that it's adequately sized. And people, uh, when they call me up and say, you know, it does this, it does that, it gets hot. I always ask them, does it, does it cycle? That's like my first question I ask them is, you know, not what pump it has, not what fans it has. I say, does the, does the car coolant cycle? Does it get up to your operating temperature that you have set in the ECU? And then does it reach the off uh, temperature as well and go over and under the limits or does it just kind of go up to you know whatever the uh, on temperatures and then stay there and hang out forever and never really cool back down to kick the cooling fans off like at hot idle um harley uh so i get asked that question a lot you know how i do it and and i pretty much just always tell them the car needs to be able to heat cycle it needs to be able to get up to operating temperature and cool off unless you have pulse width and then it just needs to be able to hold a temperature no matter what on a hot day i mean like a hot hot day 90s outside so uh so I figured the best way to do that or to show people is I'm going to give you the example that I always give people is the race car does fine. Um, and the race car has a be cool radiator in it and it's as big as I could fit. That's how big it is. I can't remember the exact dimensions, but it's as large as I could fit. I want to say it's like 32 by 19, I believe is the size that I put in this thing. Um, it's a two and a half or three inch core. It was one of the biggest uh, radiators I could get in this location. And I had Be Cool Custom make it for me. It has a pair of spall fans. Um, these right here are the 16-inch uh, fans. It has a pair of 16-inch fans on it, and they work really, really good. When they kick on, the car cools off immediately. The water pump situation is underneath the car. I'll put it up in the air real quick so you can see that. So there's the water pump. It's a Davies 150. Um, it's right on the radiator itself. That's how it's suspended. That's how it's held. There's no additional bracketry. I don't have any problems with it. Um, it's held on with a bulkhead and dual o-rings um these guys produce a lot of flow they work really really well i use the same pump on my uh, ice tank on my intercooler and i just have dash 16 lines ran up to a 417 water manifold and it, it works really really well the car stays cool i've never seen the car get hot um i've never seen it hold a temperature above what i have the fans set at when the fans kick on the car cools down period um and then while driving this thing gets so much airflow um from the front end of it that driving down the road, um, even on like a 70 or 80 degree day, the car will be 155 or 160 degrees going down the road. It'll cool off and be well below the threshold. And we've even seen it like 140 degrees if it's a cool evening outside. But yes, it's a be cool radiator. It's huge. I have it mounted at about, if I remember correctly, I have it mounted like right at a 45. It's almost perfectly 45 to the car and, and it works fine. Um, don't have any issues with it at all. Just some big small fans good uh good water pump and it gets the job done and i'll show you real quick just how fast this thing actually cycles from uh from temperature and right now it's the street tune so it's a 190 turns on and then turns off at 180 so i'll show you just how fast this thing heat cycles okay so as you can see i got the car fired up the cooling system's approaching 190 that's when it's gonna kick on and it shouldn't take very long. Uh, if the car takes longer than like 30 seconds to a minute to cool off, your fans are probably too weak or your flow's too weak. Um, but look how fast this thing cycles from 190 back down to 180. It is impressively fast. There's 190. Cooling fans on. They're on. Look at the cooling system drop. Right back down. 177. Then it'll just keep doing that over and over again. Every you know 30 seconds, 
or so, it'll just trigger the fans on for 10 seconds and then it'll trigger them right back off. And that just bounces right between there. I could hook up pulse width to it, not a big deal, um, and do that to hold a sustained temperature, but I just find it easier doing this. It's, it's kind of how I like it, just to test the cooling systems. Um, but if your car doesn't do this, or uh, something similar to it, it may not have to be this fast, but if it does this at all, you got a good cooling system. So that's how fast, you know, it, it comes down to temperature once hitting 190. 190 and it just falls. The fans kick on, it moves a ton of air. You feel it, you know, as I was standing there, I was feeling the fans kick on, blow heat at me, and then it just triggers right back off. It's it's really nice having a good cooling system on a hot rod like this. And it's not cold out today. It's, you know, it's 78, 79 degrees right now and humid. Um, so it's not like it's 40 degrees outside and it just does this sometimes. I could put the hood on this thing on the hottest day in the summer, put it out in the parking lot, right in the middle of the parking lot, and let it sit there for hours. And it would just continue to do that over and over and over again. It doesn't care. And that is a very good feeling when you're stuck in traffic on a drag and drive pulling a trailer and there's a wreck on the interstate or a wreck on the highway and you're just sitting there in traffic. You don't have to worry about pulling over, letting the car cool off, doing anything, uh, anything like that. You can focus on just getting to the next location, make sure the car's gonna run good that day. So big tip, uh, have a badass radiator and have cooling fans that move as much air as possible. That is very important to the success of a drag and drive car or any street rod. Um, any one of the street rods we do, I put the biggest radiators I possibly can. Uh, nothing but, you know, a minimum is spall fans. There's better ones even out there now that do, you know, really a lot of airflow stock units that do a lot of airflow. Put fans on it that flow a ton of air. Um, very, very important. So, yeah, if you like uh, seeing stuff about the car or tips and tricks on drag and drive, you know, uh, help. Be sure to like and subscribe Scram Speeds page. And, uh, Check it out for uh, future videos on this hot rod. We'll uh, we'll keep them coming as the questions come. Thanks, guys.